wildlife officers interdicted a vessel that had 25 illegal immigrants, potential illegal immigrants from Haiti. They had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear, and those illegal aliens uh, were turned over to the Coast Guard for, for deportation. Our next guest has been helping kids in Haiti for decades and knows firsthand the threat these gangs posed to their and our homeland. Evangelist Jack Brewer joins us now. Jack, it's great to see you this, this morning. L let's start with some of your personal experience in Haiti. You know, this is a particularly rough moment, but Haiti go, seems to go in five-year cycles of chaos and violence and never achieving some level of stability for their society. Yeah, sadly, you know, since the, the earthquake, the horrific earthquake in 2010 that took over 300,000 people, um, you know, Haiti had an opportunity to um, be re rebuilt, um, but that just, you know, went, went, went away by the wayside by corruption. Uh, unfortunately, there was just so, so much money uh, that was misappropriated, you know, starting with the Clintons and, and assigning them uh, to, to oversee Haiti. And it's just, uh, it's been a, a decline ever since. I tell you what, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a sad thing to see and watch. Um, you, you're talking about millions of people. There's about four million people right now, uh, Will, that uh, will be starving in the next week or two. Uh, if we don't do something. I mean, this is going to be uh, one of the worst humanitarian crises to ever hit the Western Hemisphere. So help me understand really quickly, Jack, because I think in order to understand what could potentially be literally washing ashore in America, we first have to understand what's happening in Haiti. So help me understand the level of criminality, gang rule. I mean, we know what we know a little more about what it's like today. We hear about, you know, barbecue, yeah. the main gang leader running the streets of Haiti. But What's, what are the role gangs have played and what's it like in Haiti on an ongoing basis? So just take out your perspective or understanding of what a gang member is and throw that away. Uh, these, these folks are now ruling the society. And so you, you talk about uh, whether it's their local government, even all the way up to their national government. You know, the U.N. did a report uh, and 28 of the 30 senators in Haiti all had gang related ties and in, 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 in drug dealing. Uh, and so when you start thinking about it, these gangs are controlling the politicians. They're controlling the streets. Uh, they've already taken over the ports, even the main port in Port-au-Prince. Right now, as we speak, um, the, the local law enforcement officers are battling with the gangs for control of the main point, port into the country. So if you can imagine, all the tax money and revenue, everything's pay to play. Uh, I have about 120 orphans right now uh, up in Kent's Cost. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're trying mm. to get them food. We can't give get them food, Will, uh, because th the gangs are there. And so the streets are controlled by them. And so they, they literally put up roadblocks, whether it's tires, uh, they burn things and cut off, put big boulders in the middle of the streets to cut off people as they're trying to move food uh, and what have you. And so, as you can imagine, if you can't get the food, you can't get the resources. Now, both of the major international airports, uh, both in Port-au-Prince and in Cape Haitian, uh, now are not receiving flights. The U.S. Mm -hmm. government has just announced that they're going to try to do a flight to evacuate uh, Americans, uh, but they don't know the date on that because they're shooting at planes and, you know, you have, you know, really uh, uh, army level military grade weapons being used on the ground in Haiti. And so this situation is dire. It's real. Right. You heard Governor Ron DeSantis, who's been out front uh, talking about all these Haitian migrants that are not coming to the border. Uh, even in Florida, where I live, you see uh, the Haitian migrants coming across. And so, Will, we must do something about this. I know we've been focusing on Ukraine, which is uh, uh, out of our hemisphere, but this one right here hits home, and we, we must uh, do more uh, to, to figure out this situation in Haiti. You know, Jack, one of the first things I saw, I, I was in the Caribbean last week, and I was reading a local newspaper, was how they, one of the first things the gangs did is they broke into the prisons, and they freed like 3,000 right. guys from the prisons. 4,000, uh, actually. 4,000 <laughs> 4, 4, prisoners right. hit the streets. So what I'm curious now, Jack, is what hits our shores? So every, that, that Caribbean newspaper, by the way, was like every island is getting ready to lock down their borders and worried about who's going to show up through boats uh, on their shores. What's going to show up on our shores? I mean, will it be the gang members? Will it be refugees? Will it be a massive influx of Haitians? What, what, what comes to Florida? 
You're going you're gonna to have a massive influx of, of Haitians continuing to come. We already do. I mean, even in the schools uh, in South Florida, I mean, they're being overrun uh, with, 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 you know, Haitian, spe Haitian Creole-speaking uh, kids, and the teachers don't know what to do. But, you know, the gang members are also coming here. I can tell you that most of these uh, Haitians have family members or people that they know uh, in the United States. And so where are you going to go? You're going to go to the closest places where you can be around family or friends or people that you know, they can come here, they can speak the language. Uh, and so, of course, they're going to come here. A lot of these people are in dire, dire needs. And, and let me be clear, some of these gang members have been in gangs purely, uh, purely to survive. I mean, this is a survival right. thing uh, in, in Haiti. And so um, you got some, some good people and some bad people coming to our borders, and we must do something now. Uh, and in addition to that, you're going to have a, 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 a Rwanda genocide-like situation uh, if you continue to have these gang leaders uh, controlling that oh, wow. island uh, with no import and export coming through that through that place, it's it's a really bad situation, and, yeah. and America needs to lead on this, not sit back and wait for Kenya or another country to do it. This is affecting us, and so Joe Biden, the. I, I'm telling you, Joe Biden, if you're listening to this right now, you need to do more to stop this, this situation in Haiti. Uh, you have been sitting on your heels, and God forbid you're going to have blood on your hands with four million people starving to death if you don't act now. All right, Jack Brewer, incredible perspective this morning. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.